Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shubham Singh, third year radiology resident at Grand Government Medical College and Sir JG Group of Hospitals. I am presenting a paper on role of diffusion tensor imaging in glioma under the guidance of Dr. Sharad Malwadkar. Glioma is a type of uh, tumor that starts in the glial cells of the brain or the spine. High-grade gliomas are highly vascular tumors and have a tendency to infiltrate diffusely. They have extensive areas of necrosis and hypoxia. Infiltrating gliomas usually spread in the course of white matter tracts, and DTI is the single non-invasive imaging method which can quantitatively evaluate the white matter tracts for their microstructural integrity. Diffusion tensor imaging is an advanced technique that provides information about the diffusivity of water molecules in the tissue, and that can be used to map fiber tracts in the brain. Within the cerebral white matter, water molecules tend to diffuse more freely along the direction of axonal fascicles rather than across them. Such directional dependency of diffusivity is termed as an isotropy. Like in this nerve fiber, we can see that the diffusion is greater in the axis parallel to the orientation of the nerve fiber, leading to larger apparent uh, diffusion coefficient ADC along the long axis of axon. However, due to bi bilipid cell membrane, the diffusion is less in the direction perpendicular to the nerve fiber, leading to lower ADC. This map assigns color to uh, voxels based on a combination of an isotropy and direction. The color assignment is arbitrary, but the typical convention that is used is uh, the vector controls the U and uh, fractional and isotropy controls brightness. In fiber tractography imaging, the conventional color coding is as follows. Uh, commissural fibers uh, which run transversely appear red. Association fiber running anteroposterly are green. Projection fibers which run cranocordially are blue. Fibers that have an oblique orientation are represented with colors originating from the combination of the three primary colors, red and blue form magenta, green and red, uh, green and red form yellow, green and blue form cyan. White metal fibers can be classified as commissural association or projection. Commissural fiber example, uh, corpus callosum appears red on TTI. Optic radiation running uh, anteroposterally is green and corticospinal tract running cranocordially uh, is blue. Using this principle of DTI, we can uh, analyze the effect of tumor on the white matter fibers. Like uh, some tumor can cause displacement of uh, white matter tract leading to there is uh, uh, However, in that case, the white matter tracts are uh, intact. And uh, in some cases, it can cause edema of the white matter tract. The white matter tracts are intact in that case also. However, the fractional anisotropy is decreased. Uh, some tumors can uh, infiltrate into the white matter tract, causing reduction in uh, fractional anisotropy. The fiber tracts remain identifiable though in, the, in that cases. However, in extreme cases of high-grade uh, uh, gliomas like glioblast or glioblastoma multiforme and anaplastic pestocytoma, there is complete disruption of uh, white matter tracts and uh, resultant complete reduction, uh, mark, mark reduction in fractional anisotropy and uh, white matter tracts are not identifiable. Now, let's go to the cases. Case one, a 35-year-old male presented with uh, Complaint of seizure disorder. There was no neurological deficit on uh, examination. Imaging revealed a well-defined solid cystic layer hyperintense, subtly enhancing lesion in the left hyphrontal frontoparietal lobe. There was reduction in fractional anisotropy, and that lesion caused displaced uh, uh, displaced displacement of white matter fibers. Uh, histopath revealed that it was a low grade glioma. Case two, a 70 year old male presented with a complaint of severe headache. On examination, rhombus test was positive. However, no other neurological deficit was found. Imaging revealed an ill defined player hyper intense non enhancing lesion in the superior and middle cerebellar peduncle, uh, left midbrain, and left cerebellar hemisphere. There was mild reduction in the uh, fractional anisotropy in the tumoral region, and the white matters were edematous. Uh, this on histopathology revealed a low grade glamour, grade 2. Case 3, a 55 year old female presented with a headache and seizure. There was a left sided mild power loss on examination with no other neurological deficit. Imaging revealed an ill defined player hyper intense 
non-enhancing non lesion in the uh, right frontal lobe and basal ganglia. There was reduction in fractional anisotropy. And uh, uh, on tectography, we can see that there is infiltration and displacement of white tract. Histopath revealed that it was a high grade clear free uh, glioma. Case 4, a 40, 40 year old male presented with a complaint of chronic headache and altered sensorium. Patient was not, uh, not oriented to time, place, or person on examination. Imaging revealed an ill defined flare hyper intense, quickly announcing uh, lesion involving the pons, upper half of middle oblongata, and bilateral cere uh, cerebellar uh, peduncles. Uh, fractional anisotropy was reduced and on tectography we can see that there is complete infiltration of the white metal tract running through it. Uh, histopath revealed it was a high grade glioma grade 4 case 5. Uh, a 36 year old male presented with complaint of severe headache and multiple episodes of convulsions. Patient was not oriented to time place or person and imaging revealed an ill-defined solid cystic layer hyper intense ring enhancing lesion in the left temporal lobe. There was reduction in fractional anisotropy and we can see there is complete destruction of the white matter test. Uh, histopath revealed a high-grade glioma, grade 4. Discussion. The preoperative identification of the extent of malignant cell infiltration within the white matter tracts constitutes a significant challenge. Tumor cells can invade and change the white matter fiber structure, uh, structure by widening, displacing, and or disrupting the fiber bundle. The surgical treatment for brain tumor is aimed at achieving the maximum possible reception while minimizing the neurological deficit resulting from surgical injury to the intact functional brain not affected by the tumor. This requires pre and intraoperative mapping of the tumor as well as the definition of its relationship with uh, functional structures so that such structures can be preserved during surgical resection. Conclusion DTI provides better assessment of the effect of cerebral tumor on white, uh, white matter tracts compared to the conventional MRI. This effect may take form of one or more of the four patterns that were discussed previously. The preoperative pattern of white motor tract in, uh, involvement was significantly associated with postoperative DTI changes, which may be reflected in better clinical neurological outcome. Hence, this technique is gaining support as a preoperative MRI method for evaluating brain tumors closely related to the eloquent areas optimizing the surgical strategies. These were my references. Thank you.